Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're gonna see if our hard work has paid off. We're gonna get things set up so that we can start throwing our override orb at our droid. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that our override orb has everything it needs, which right now it doesn't. So let's left click on our override orb and we're gonna add component and we'll add an audio source and we're gonna turn off play on awake and then we're gonna add a rigid body and we're gonna turn off use gravity. Cool, now we need to add the sounds for the sound effects. So let's go to resources and if you haven't already, then make sure that you have all of these audio sources added to your project from the assets file that we provided. You'll need the button sound. We've got the capture scene theme, the droid cry, main world theme, success, throw, and thump. For the drop sound, we're gonna bring the thump into there. Success is going to go into the success field on the override orb and throw is gonna go into the throw sound. Pretty straightforward, right? So that's done. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we've got a tag for the droid, which at this point, I don't believe that we do. So let's open up the plane in our hierarchy, click the droid two, and we're gonna see if it has a tag, which it does not. And a droid tag does not exist. We're gonna need that. So let's go to the utilities folder in the project explorer. And we are going to open up the pocket droids constants file. So double click that to open it in your IDE. And the reason we're going in here is we're gonna add this tag as a constant. I'm gonna put a line of space between the tags and the scenes. And I'm gonna say public static string tag all uppercase droid and I'm gonna set that to droid with a capital B and then I'm just gonna copy this to make sure that it's copied exactly and I've got it right and I'm gonna go back to unity and then I'm gonna click on this droid again up in the project hierarchy click on the tag drop down where it currently says untagged and I'm gonna click add tag and then I'm gonna press this little plus sign underneath the empty list. Maybe, there we go. And I'm gonna paste that in. And then I'm gonna click save so that we've got our droid tag available. Now we click on the droid two again because creating that tag didn't assign it. So we see that it's untagged and I'm actually gonna go into the models folder and drop down the droid folder and I'm gonna to go to these prefabs for droid one and droid two, and I'm gonna add this tag there. So droid one is now a droid, and droid two is now a droid. Just so that the prefabs have them there, and I don't have to apply the current state of this droid to override the prefab, because we've made some changes to it to make it work for this scene that I don't necessarily want to be global. Cool, now that that's done, we're gonna close up the droids folder and we're gonna add one more tag. So let's go to the tag manager again by clicking on the drop down next to tag and we're gonna add a tag and I'm gonna call this override orb. So let's click on the override orb in the hierarchy and I'm gonna add that override orb tag that we just created to it. Okay, now our orb is gonna need one more thing. So left click on the override orb, and then we're gonna go down to add component, and we're gonna need a sphere collider. Let's zoom in a little bit in our scene editor. And we're gonna press play and make sure that this sphere is kind of where we want it to be in relation to the orb. Okay, perfect. 
So if we zoom in, you can kind of see, let me get a better angle. There we go. The contrast of the grass works well here. So you can kind of see the fading ring, that circle that we created, is just shy of the collider, which means by default, it's already at a good size for us. Cool. We'll stop running and we'll zoom back out. Okay, now that we've done all this hard work, let's go check and see if this script actually works. Let's press play. And first, our music is playing. And let's grab this orb and toss it. Oh. That went way too far. Let's stop running. And I'm going to go take a look at the script. Let's double click the override orb script and see what's going on. So let's just kind of eyeball this. I see the problem right now. I apologize. In this first section, if input dot get mouse button and we're going for the grabbing, I let autocomplete get the best of me. It should be input dot get get mouse button down. OK, let's save that and head back to Unity. And we'll see if that fixes our problem. Press play. Yeah, that's a lot better. Awesome. And the ball disappears the way it's supposed to. Perfect. We also heard the throw sound when we launched the ball off. So we're good to go on that front. What we've got left to do then is handle collisions. And to do that, we're going to take one more dive into the override orb script. So find that in your project explorer. And I'm going to double click it to open it in my IDE. And I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. There's one last function that we need to add. We're going to add private void on collision enter. And the system is going to pass in the other object that collided with us. Now we're going to say if not tracking collisions. And we're just going to return because at that point, we don't care what we collided with or how. Now that we're past that point, we're going to say turn off collision tracking through our Boolean. So tracking collisions equals false. The next step is to say if other dot game object dot compare tag and it's pocket droids constants dot tag droid. So if what we collided with was a droid, then we're going to play the success sound. So audio source dot play one shot success sound. Else, if it wasn't a droid we collided with, we know it was the ground or a building or something else. So we're going to say audio source dot play one shot. And we're going to pass in the drop sound. And then our last step is to invoke power down. And we're going to say collision stall time. Cool. There we go. Let's save that and head back to Unity and see if that worked. And at the same time, I'm actually going to add a temporary print statement just to say print was a droid if the other game object was a droid. And then in the other option, I'm going to say print was not a droid. And I don't like using these too much, but it's a quick way for us to double check and make sure that we did or did not hit a droid. So back in Unity, let's go ahead and press play. And we're going to grab our orb, orb and we're going to toss it. Apparently, I tossed it a little too far. So let's restart. And we're going to grab our orb and toss it. And we heard it roll. And here at the bottom in our console, it says, not a droid, was not a droid. 
So stop it, and I'm going to run it again and try to hit the droid this time. Perfect. We heard the success sound, and it printed out was a droid. So now we know that script is working. Let's go take out those print statements real quick. So head back to your IDE, and we'll remove the print statement from the droid case and the not a droid case. So it's great that we know that we hit a droid or did not hit a droid. But what do we do with that information? Well, we've got a few options. So say we hit the droid. Right now, with the way our system's set up, we could go and add extra events. Well, probably the best way to do it right now involves adding something to involves adding a function to our scene manager class. So let's do that real quick. We're going to have to do a little bit of script cleanup, but it'll really be worth it in the end. So head back to Unity, and we're going to open the Pocket Droid Scene Manager class here in the Utilities folder. And we're going to add a method. We're going to say public abstract void droid collision. And then we're going to pass in the game object droid and a collision object of other. But wait, does this mean that we're going to have to go back and clean up the world scene? The answer is yes and no. If we left it this way, we would. However, we can make this function optional by removing the abstract and giving it a body. This makes it to where any class that implements the pocket droid scene manager, or rather extends from it, will have this function natively, but right now it does nothing. If we want to use this, we can overwrite it, which means the only cleanup we should have to do is in the droid class. So let's save that, and let's head back to Unity. And we're going to go open up the droid class. So head up to Models expand the droids folder, and double click on the droid script to open that up in your IDE. Now we're just going to scroll to the bottom, and we're going to borrow the functionality out of on, on mouse down, and we're going to add a method on collision enter. Should be pretty familiar. And we're going to paste in the same info from on mouse down, only we're going to remove the cry sound. And instead of calling pocket droid scene manager dot droid dot droid tapped, we're going to call droid collision. And we're going to pass in this dot game object the same way we did before and other. So whatever collided with it. Now when we're ready, we can just do something about this function in the in the scene manager for our capture scene. Let's head back to Unity, and we're going to go ahead and save. And we're going to call this video good. We've got collision detection set up on our droid. Everything's working great. Our ball throws well. The physics are working. And we're all set to move on with this scene and, and get a lot closer to wrapping this game up. Great job following along. I'm excited to show you what's coming up. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.